Okay, hello there everyone, it's King Hedgehog here and welcome back to Endzone or World Apart. So, at the last episode, at the end of it, we uh, plopped down our hunter. Now, let me have a peek. Yeah, he is right there, look at that. Now, and he should be out on his way to go and collect some stuff for us. Because if I remember well, there we go. So, we needed to sign the hunter, which we did. We actually have uh, two of them assigned. Very well, because we need some meat for our bellies to make our people more and more happy. We need that bar to go up there just to make sure that the population grows a little bit faster than it does right now and the other thing is we need 100 venison and or 100 wild boar meat in order to uh, take off this quest so uh, our good friends the old man had, hmm, I don't remember his name but the old man will tell us then what is going to be the next step here in the tutorial because I do not think that we're ready yet although we've got pretty much all of the basics ready and set to go all right now and while we are there you guys go back to a normal speed let's have a quick peek how we'll be looking so it is pretty dry out except for the lakes the rest of the map looks pretty much similar to what we have now we do have a nice uh, village area here interesting location very much interesting some uh, nice old buildings around so there's loads and loads of scrap to be gotten from all of that and look at that our nice little village and over here we've got um the cemetery where Currently 12 out of the 96 graves are fully occupied already, so we're making good progress there. Now, Mr. Hunter. Uh, is the problem that we uh, have too much food? Now, let's increase it then by 100 just so you can bring that dead deer in. Because we really want that food coming in. Now, here we have the problem that we don't have any workforce assigned. We do not have anybody assigned to the herbal hut. Oh yeah it looks like uh, he kicked the bucket and we do not have anybody to replace him all right um let's fix that uh we take our hunters and let's reduce the hunter by one to only one because we already have 80 venison there we have some rain coming in which is very very nice and then let's add a herbalist right there so we get our uh, herbs coming back in because that is needed for uh, our healthcare facilities all right now, Mr. Hunter, are you going to bring in a little bit more food or no? All right, so let's increase it again by a little bit more. I mean, we've got tons and tons of food coming in, which is a good thing. But right now it is kind of like a problem. There we go. There's the hunter coming in. And there Perfect. it is done. The hunting Arthur. lodge equally provides us directly with food, but it functions somewhat irregularly because it relies on wildlife in the surrounding area. Nevertheless, it can be indispensable during a drought because even the deer and wild boar still roam around the forest exactly all right arthur thank you very much for your wise words what are the next ones however wild animals can not only be shot they can be captured too when a wild animal has been captured it can be brought to a pasture and served there as livestock in order to capture wild animals, you have to instruct your hunter to do this. You also ought to set up a pasture and assign a herder. Yes, sir. All right, so we need to build a... I've already switched it over here to the capture mode, so now he's going to be capturing. Now, let's move your area over a little bit here. And let's have a look. Is there any deer or anything in the area? There's some right over here. There's a couple of stags. There you go. Now, go and fetch the stags. Let me move it over there so he has plenty of space for that. Perfect. Now, now we need to build ourselves a pasture. And I think I'm just going to put the pasture right next door to the hunter. Oh, that is big though. I did not expect that. Um, and of course, that little hobble there is in the way. So maybe we put it here. Right there at the crossroad. Okay, there's a couple of trees that needs to go, but that is okay. And then right here... We will assign one person as a herder and that's pretty much the only person we have how are we looking with water just over five thousand i think we're okay there now food we are doing absolutely fine we're running out of storage capacity i figured as much but we have already upgraded this and we cannot do that again which is kind of like a problem now we are running out of storage capacity on a lot of things yes okay 
Yeah, all right. So we'll just wait for him to uh, bring some live animals in. And there we go. Now we have everything that we need to build the pasture. There we go. And it is complete. So now what we need to do next, I think... Yeah, so we need to assign a type of animal. But if I go here, choose the type of animal. We don't have any yet because he's not been out and hunting yet. And there's nothing nearby either. Ah, there we go. Dear, dear, dear. Where are you? Oh, dear. But right, let's see. Can we find him? You're running around right here. All right, so you go and fetch a couple of deer. There's four of them right there. I can see them. They're right here. Can you just go and hunt some? I mean, you need to capture. You don't need to provide us with more food. All right, I'll up your level again. See? So I need to have space for food in order for him to go and capture a deer. All right, now let's uh, speed it up a little bit. Let's have a look if we can actually... Uh, See him capturing anything. Ooh, I have the right one selected. Now, is he going to bring him back to his barn? And we are full on food again, isn't it? I mean, we are just producing too much food. Can we tell people that they need to eat more? Oi, can we change the rations here somewhere? Inventory limit. Ah, they can basically have everything, right? Mm -mm. Yep, so there's nobody left in here. Disable building repairs. No, we don't need that either. Alright, so the problem is that we are producing more food than what we have storage for. All right, there. Now, we're going to bring this one in. And there go the other deer. Bye. All right, so now we need to go and find ourselves some new deer. Because we need two of them before we can put them in there. Now, I don't see any of them except those ones. So let him go out there and grab the next one. But look at that. Then again, we have food. Again, at our limit. I mean, I'll just up it by a thousand. Hopefully, he's going to catch another one. Looks like it. All right, so what are we looking at? We have one deer, and there you go. Two animals of the same. Now we've got two. There we animals go. Animals captured by a hunter are brought to a pasture where they are tended to and cared for by herders. Some animals produce resources such as milk or eggs. Other animals can only be slaughtered to eat. You ought to find out for yourself which type of animal brings you which benefit. On each pasture, you can choose which type of animal ought to be kept there. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that we do not um, want to milk the deer, but sure. All right, got it. Thanks. You must provide water for the animals you keep on your pasture. This enables them to survive and reproduce. When enough animals are fully grown, the herder will start to slaughter them. If you don't want animals to be slaughtered, you can also instruct the herder not to do so. Yeah, but we do like us some venison. Now your so. herders know how they ought to handle the animals. And now that you've already captured several animals, don't forget to instruct your hunters to hunt animals again in the future so that they can continue to gather and provide food. Yes. Yes. Now, we don't have anything else. No, we only have the two deer, so we are absolutely doing fine. With our increased production, our stockpile is going to run out soon. Yes. The supply routes for our production buildings are getting longer and longer, too. To tackle these problems, you ought to build a temp... Yeah. Oh, no, I was not supposed to click that yet. Okay, so we need to build a temporary storeroom, and we need to have roads laid out. Perfect. Temporary storeroom. Definitely need it. Desperately need it. That, too. All right, so I'm going to put one here at the crossroad. And I will add one. That is going to block this road, which I don't like. 
but oh yeah there it can look at that it's going to fit right there now i'm building purposely too in the hope that we get additional storage because we are so running out of storage all the time and that way we finally can uh, continue to hunt and increase our food stocks because that's going to be the main thing making sure that we have enough food at least for now when we have food we can have the people and when we have the people we have more jobs now look at that they are nice and in the green because they've got loads and loads of rich food now there's more things that we need to build in order to make them happy oh yes and we can also finally do roads beautiful all right so i click here and i can drag it all the way until here perfect now and then let's get this one done until here nice i like that all right so finally we're going to get some roads here in our settlement and let's get them nice and around here there you go and then from here all the way until there perfect now these ones are not as nicely lined up as i would like but that is what it is there's nothing we can do for it all right, you go here, and you can nicely Good. go around. Temporary storerooms increase your settlement's general storage capacity. Place them in a targeted manner in order to shorten the routes for goods between your production buildings. Roads are equally a great benefit, because settlers moving on roads can go distinctly faster than on a normal supporting surface. Well, see, that's the reason why we're building roads. To improve the whole thing even further, we can build a market to improve logistics at the settlement. Besides being an enormous stockpile for resources that is even able to store water, the market is responsible for distributing resources within your settlement. What's more, it also increases your settlers' confidence. All right, so now I did ideally want to have it here, but I think if we put it here, um, we can store even more and we can also store some water in there. Plus it has quite a big range, so let's put that one right down there and they can start building that and then we can start looking at getting... Well, we need to assign two of those, which is fine for me. Let's add a third one just because we can at the moment. Don't need additional hunters or maybe we actually do. I mean, our food is pretty much at the same fine level for now because we were massively over food for reasons um water we are also around the 5000 mark let's increase that to five once this is going to be built we should be good also there right now let's get the road here around the marketplace done logisticians are able to amass resources from the whole settlement and bring them to the market this improves the flow of your products and leads to your settlers having to walk shorter distances to fulfill their individual needs. The combination of these attributes makes the market the ideal building when you want to enlarge or even relocate your settlement. Perfect. The larger your settlement gets, the farther some settlers have to travel to get to all of the food you produce. To make life a little easier for them, you can build a food station Logisticians who work at the food station will collect food from your storage buildings and production facilities and bring it to the food station. That sounds like a plan. All right, so let's get a food station and we will drop that right about here, which pretty much covers in an, our entire area right up there. And there we go. We need to increase our logistics. Logi that difficult word thing. We need to increase them. Logistics wow you're not making it easy now are you all right so those ones are increased do we have extra people to add additional builders we do perfect a leg now chop chop guys and can somebody oh it's a wild boar sorry i thought it was one of our settlers but no we're all good everybody's still kind of alive fish how are we doing here Graves, 4 out of 96. I'm pretty sure we had 12 before. What did we do with the other people? I do not want to know. Maybe that is what uh, the fires here are burning on. I do not wish to know. Alright, so you are nearly done. Do you need to get a road around there as well? With the new food station, your settlers are now able to supply themselves with food directly on site. If your settlement is supposed to grow even further, 
you can think about whether you want to provide additional food stations. Yes, yes. Now, I don't think we still have problems with um, the max cap at food now, do we? I mean, we've reached production limit, but I can now increase that because we have space for it. There you go. All right, perfect. Distributing food at your settlement is going to prove to be extremely practical. However, your settlers not only need food to survive, they need water too. No. To be able to distribute water in a targeted manner, you can build a water point. All right, but I think, I mean, I can put you right next to it here, but I'll put you on this side. Um, I think, though, that you are not going to get any water unless they bring it all the way from here, which would be great. I just don't think that will happen like that. Right, look at that. So the storage is only here at 6%, which is great. All right, so we don't have any decontamination kits. Might need to work on that. Let's um, increase this one to five, like it is asking us to do. And then we will wait for this thing to be built. And there we go. That's the wood. Well, that's the tree chopped out. And now we need to get the wood coming in. I still stick with it that it wouldn't have made so much more sense if they would leave the log here and chop it up into pieces. But apparently they forgot that uh, trees and logs are wood. All right, need a little bit more scrap and then we can finally start building. There's plenty of deer around again. All right, one more delivery. There we go. Bingo. Cool. And see it him hammering it all together. Nice. Now that your settlers also have a water point available, they can supply themselves with water and food. Similar to how it's done at the food stations, this enables you to precisely control at which places your settlers are able to attend to their needs. All right, so I have to uh, relocate his field of work so he actually has the water tower within his range. Otherwise, he will not be picking up any water. All right, great. Thanks, Arthur. Since we have our logistics under control, now we can concern ourselves with the weather and its challenges. We can build a weather station to enable us to make a forecast regarding upcoming weather and learn if potentially contaminated rain might be coming our way. It can also be used to prepare our crops and rainwater collectors we might have against contaminated rain by covering them. Now we're talking, so we're finally learning something here and we're finally working on something. All right, now do you give a negative impact? You do not. That is kind of okay. Um, here we have our fields and the orchard is right next to it. Um, how about I just connect you here next to the market. Now the road is going to jump one on the side. I'll do that on the outskirts. I think that makes sense, but we do need to chop a lot of trees for that though. Um, can I do it here on this side? I could. Let's rotate you and let's place you... Right there, no, then that is going to be in the way. All right, so it's going to be very, very challenging to get that in. That is not going to work either. All right, so a nice straight road up is not going to happen, no? Hmm. Not too happy with that, but it is what it is. I can't change that either. There we go. We'll just place it like that. All right. So now, do I need to assign somebody for a specific profession? It doesn't tell me, so I assume that that is not the case. Now, let's have a look. What do we need for it? We need a ton of resources, though. But we have pretty much everything except for electronics, which we haven't researched yet. I'm not sure if we... Do we have research already? Not yet. We cannot yet open the menu for the knowledge points, which is okay. All right, so the wood is nearly there. Now, let's have a quick peek around our town. How are we actually doing? I mean, there's loads of deer around. I think that they're adjusting relatively well to um, life here in this... Uh, well... 
Very good. Now that we know what sort of weather awaits us and how we can protect ourselves against contaminated rain by covering our crops and rainwater collectors, we ought to attend to collecting the rain we want. Yeah. And let me guess, I'm going to have to watch that. So I was going to say, it looks like the deer have pretty well adjusted to, I was going to say, it first new city, the village, or, but it's just basically a scrapyard where we've moved in, but that's okay. All right, understood. Thank Rain you. Rain not only humidifies the soil, it can also be automatically collected via rainwater collectors to generate a steady flow of additional water. Since we've already built our weather station, we are able to decide what kind of circumstances would make us want to cover our rain collectors. Well, I can pretty much tell you here, the highly contaminated rain, I think we would want to have it covered. All right, so, but you want me to build a rain collector, which we can do. Let's get the rain collector. Clicking it on here is so much easier. All right, so we'll flip it around and we'll just um, place it right next door here. So you have a much shorter way to walk and we can actually move your active area here just in case we get enough water in here. All right, guys, now let's speed it up a little bit. Let's get the speedy boys on and let's get that thing built. Um, what is your problem? Um, oh, you had no food. Yeah, because we only have 6,000 plus in, uh, in stock, no? Or are you the water station that's crying? Look at that, just like that. They're building it already. Nearly done. It is going so, so fast. Never forget that our settlers might get sick if we distribute water contaminated with radiation at our settlement. Even if they're wearing protective clothing, we should make sure that the collected water is as purified as possible. Okay. We can have our crops covered to shield our seedlings against radiation. But once they've been covered, naturally they won't be irrigated with rain anymore. To rectify this problem, we can build an irrigation plant that is able to artificially regulate soil humidification. Place this building with care because it is only going to irrigate the soil within its impact radius. See, there we go. All right, so I place you right about here. Um, or am I going to do it right here? Just to make sure that we have all of this nicely covered. I think that's about the right location for it. There you go. Now you... That's the weather station. That's okay. Here we have the well. And the well is not working because we don't have a person there. That is correct. We need somebody in the irrigator and we need an additional well keeper. We still have a couple of settlers to spear, which is okay. All right, now you guys start building that. And then let's have a look. Now, we do need to soon cover up our rain collector because um, we have some contaminated rain very, very soon. And at the moment, there is still uh, no contamination in there. Fabulous. Right, so as long as our irrigation plant is supplied with filtered water, there we see it is able to neutralize a possible contamination of the soil due to radiation. But watch out. When water contaminated with radiation is fed into the system, this can lead to precisely the opposite. And the irrigation plant itself may possibly cause radioactive pollution of its surrounding area. Oh, well. So we need to make sure that this Alongside radiation meter always stays rain, at none. There are other environmental hazards, such as sandstorms or droughts. The soil dries out during a drought, and sandstorms sweep across the landscape from time to time. These sandstorms can damage your buildings and ultimately make them unfit for use. We ought to prepare for this and assign several more builders to enable potential damage to be repaired. All right, so I'm going to... Um call this one i think um so the irrigation pump is doing his job see this is all dried out and here it is still nice and green because he is supplying them with water but i have a feeling that we are going to get ourselves a sandstorm because we already have a draw assign settlers to the profession builder 
You can decide which type of task your builders ought to give priority to at our town center. You can instruct them to merely repair buildings, to erect new buildings, or to do both at the same time. This enables you to react quickly in crisis situations. For instance, in the event of a sandstorm, you can quickly attend to having damaged buildings repaired. All right. Now that we've taken care of all the necessary needs of our settlement, such as food, water, protective clothing, and tools, our next efforts ought to focus on increasing the settlement's overall productivity. A research station allows us to develop different technologies. One step in moving our settlement ahead is to make it possible for our refiners to acquire electronics from scrap. We should no. perform research on the appropriate technology to achieve this and instruct one of our refiners to produce electronics. Yes, sir. Now, I called it Oncoming Sandstorm. It is here. It is nearly here. All right. So we need... There she is. Um, okay, so I'm going to wait. Let's get this sandstorm to pass. Um, and we need to have a look here at our recyclers. Now, we've got four of them. You're doing cloth, plastic, metal, and metal. So you can then go for electronics. But first, we need to research it. So we need to build ourselves a research station, which is another big boy. And that is, of course, also not going to fit there. So I could place it right here. Not there. Not there. So it's going to, again, have to be a little bit off center all right now here we go let's get the building overlay this is not fair the sandstorm is not even there yet and we can already see that these buildings have all been damaged so the market's been damaged the medical facilities okay so this one really needs priority all right so now sandstorm is gone almost gone let's speed it up a little bit ah there we go all right, so am I glad that uh, I don't need uh, a research station to predict a sandstorm now, am I? Now, I hope that the builders are going to do their job. Let's have a quick peek, because if we do speed it up, we should see these buildings slowly starting to turn white again. We do have enough resources for it, so we should be okay. Now, at least our people are really, really happy about that. The main problem we have, there we go, medical facility is back white is we do not have tools we do have plenty of iron so we might actually need to make ourselves an additional workshop if i wouldn't really remember where that thing is there it is um, where do we find the other one it is right there all right now can i fit one here in the site i cannot okay so i will place them back to back And of course, that's going to be just off-center. Well, that is what it is. All right, so they are working on that, which is good. Now, we now have medium contaminated rain followed by uncontaminated rain. So as soon as we switch over to uncontaminated rain, which should be here at uh, season 36 as soon as it switches. And then again, 37, there's no rain. 38, we are also fine. Weather in time of the day, nighttime, medium, contaminated rain. Yeah, let's switch that over because I would like to open this thing up again. It would be good. We need some more water. No. Nope. There we go. You can start collecting. There you go. It starts filling up nicely, relatively fast. And there's some water which is uh, reserved for it straight away, which is perfect. Now, how are we looking here? We do have an additional... There, so let's get four of these ones in. You actually make metal tools, please. Scrap tools is also fine, so at least they have something to repair with. How we're looking repairs-wise, only a few buildings left, so the builders are doing a pretty good uh, job there. All right, so how are we looking here? We are waiting for um, a researcher. We only have two people left. I need three. Mm. Um... what to do what to do maybe i should reduce um resources scrap collector refiner tailor i just added four people there right um where's the workshop right here Ah, 
Ah, it's a technician. All right, I would not have given him that, but sure. All right, but we've got us a couple of people there, so we are okay. Research station, you get an additional person there, and we already have 10 points. Brilliant. All right, so what's the first thing that it wants us to do? I am not sure. Electronics. Yes, that was it. Electronics, electronics. Now, let's get you all the way to the left. Sturdy house, scrap collector... Warehouse Electronics. There we go. You research that. Start the research, please. Nice. And then we need to instruct a recycler to produce the electronics. I think we can do that. All right. There's a drought coming on. Ah, in between the two highly contaminated drains. Beautiful. How we're looking contamination-wise relatively okay at the moment but that's going to change right here but that is okay see these fields are um, steadily producing which is a good thing all right now here we're still going to get some uncontaminated rain which is a good thing we also need to keep that going because we need loads more water and you are waiting for more wood and more scrap to do your research all right now, let's have a look. What are you screaming about? Uncoming drought. Uh, yeah, I've seen that. Homeless. Build additional houses or shelters. We have two of these, right? Infertile and old. And you are full. All right. So, we will increase you. You guys can have everybody inside. That is okay. I mean, we've got plenty of people now. More and more settlers because they're all happy. Exactly. Now, the children number is decreasing, which I understand. Since they're growing up. Something funny about that. Now, what is your... You need ruins. Ah, you have nothing left to scrap. Well. Move on to this area. There's plenty here. Alright, now. Need to keep an eye on this. Let's just be safe. Close you up. Yeah, there's not too much water in there, but that's... That's okay. I just wish that we had the option to get that done automatically. Rainwater collectors. Set the rain contamination level at which the respective buildings are supposed to be covered to protect them. Low and low. So that means I can now put you on and you will be automatically covered. Ah, perfect. That is good. All right, so I'm glad I uh, clicked on that. I didn't know that... That would have been nice to see inside the tutorial, but at least we found out. Perfect. Oh, um, what are we waiting for? Electronics researched. Yeah. Did we still not finish that? Ah, uh, we don't have the wood for it. We don't have the wood for it? Oi, lumberjacks. Gather's cabin, forces lodge. Up, oh, let's get a couple of extra people working on that. We still have seven. And we might need to build an additional one. Right here in this area. Let's get ourselves another Forester's Lodge. Food, water, resources. Forester's Lodge. All right. Now, we flip you around. Attach you right here. Perfect. You guys can start building that. It needs to be decontaminated first. Of course, I built it right smack down in the middle of a contaminated area. Well, now we have heavy uh, contaminated rain anyway, so contamination is growing. Here it is even worse. What is this? Interesting location. Well, there's quite a bit of scrap in there. Relatively interesting. Fair enough. Alright, so there's no water. Well, you can't produce any fish anyways, because our food uh, limit is at 7,000. We've got over that. And besides that, we still have this nice little patch here, green. All nice and covered. So we are all doing well. All right, so Forster's Lodge, you are completely set. So we can now up this to eight. And that should... Uh, oof, we've got seven again. Look at them being happy. In the middle of uh, radiated rain. And they're happy as Larry. All right. Of course, we have another sandstorm coming. Bang. Oh, look at that. That's not fair, though. Wow. This game is not uh, messing around, huh? 
It's seriously taking the P155 here just to uh, mess us about. Like, you're uh, doing the tutorial, and um, just as a little side note, I think you're doing a little bit too well, so how about I give you another sandstorm? And a drought, a couple of uh, highly contaminated uh, rains. I think you'll appreciate that. There we go. Research was performed on new technologies. So now we can find this sausage here. You are doing metal. You can now do electronics. With this new research station and the ability to acquire electronics from scrap, we can provide our settlement with all the materials we need. The research station is very useful in enabling us to adapt ourselves to our surroundings by using the right technologies in any situation. All right, Arthur. Thank you very much. Down in the end zone, we dealt with the concept of a solar collector. This solar collector is able to collect sunlight and convert it into electricity. We wanted to try out whether our idea works and build a solar collector. All right. Yes, absolutely, Arthur. But that's going to be for uh, the next episode. Yes, solar collector. We will do that. But we will do that here in episode four, where we're going to be working on electronics. Today, we were mainly focused on that research and uh, the weather station. So it was all about knowledge in this one. And then in the next one, we will have a look that we get the electricity up and running to see that we get everything uh, even more advanced. Now, our irrigation pump is doing a good job. Let's have a look. Do you have enough water? 87 i think you should be fine and we are providing you with water because we also have a nice amount of water in here look at that you are full with uncontaminated water you are well not full but you're working on it you guys um this is all contaminated water now right yeah um but that's going to be here but We've got the filtration system on here, so we are doing absolutely fine. Now, look at that. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, please do remember to hit that like button, and I'll see you guys right back here for more End Zone, A World Apart, episode number four, and where we're going to be focusing on electricity. <laughs>